Hello, everybody, and welcome to another very special summer edition of Ignite Radio Live. You are with Greg and Stephanie Schleter over the five mighty stations of Annunciation Radio for the Almighty, all to and for His glory. We invite you to join us to go more deeply into this great adventure at ilovemyfamily.us. You'll find great tools there to help facilitate families and small groups, couples to talk and pray together. It's summertime. You know, we always use the excuse of busyness, and now hopefully things have slowed down a little. I know for families, sometimes it seems to speed up, but we encourage you to commit to that time and you will be blessed. Absolutely. And we also want to pique your appetite for something coming up in September. We want you to just really this summer, enjoy your families, make them a priority. We know that work still goes and maybe to some, in some ways, school, homeschoolers are just keeping up with those things. But really, you know, mind the goal that is our children, our wives and children, and asking good questions and spending time where we truly grow closer together in prayer. But we want to encourage you to mark your calendars beginning September. We are doing an eight week series. We're inviting the world, but particularly here in Holy Toledo area, and I'll say reverberating throughout this country, eight weeks of talking and praying using this Live It Gathering guide, and we're calling it Supreme Makeover Home Edition. That ought to pique your appetite. There's a great story behind that, by the way, Supreme Makeover Home Edition that corresponds to 15 years ago when I shattered my wrist and God compelled me with my cameras and such to go downtown, and it led to Extreme Makeover coming into town and tremendous transformation that took place. So it set, so to speak, a template for what we can do. we come together and see how God wants to transform us. So check that out at catholicrevival.us, catholicrevival.us, and it leads into a, um, we're calling it Sanctus, Sanctus, Eucharistic Family Revival. Amazing two days with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, sponsored by the diocese. We are going to be leading this event. So those eight weeks lead up to this tremendous uh, weekend of great revival led by these great Friars of the Renewal, and then hopefully flowing into Advent. So a great adventure awaits us as we come out of summer and beginning September. Again, CatholicRevival.us. You can see a button that's there, there that says, get on board, get on board. We invite you to join us, that this is a team effort. It's not just a few people at the top. It's us. It's us marriages and families seeking the grace of God to live it more fully. So Steph, why don't you introduce our guests? So we are so excited to have Jeff and Sue Wainer with us. We first met them. I was trying to remember you guys. Was it through Father Dave Nuss or Axe or an Ignite or the Lord brought us together? At Steubenville, I think was the first time that we met. Oh, right. At the conference. That's right. Yep. Yes, yes. Shout out to the beloved Geigers, Bob, God rest mm-hmm. his soul, and his beautiful wife, Judy, um, and the Dudenhoffers. And just, it was, you're right. Good memory, Sue. Woo. Um, so d- blessed from then on to kind of connect. And and uh, you guys have been such an inspiration in so many ways. And we just love how God works. He's just so good, right? So great. What a great God we have. So we love to give our guests an opportunity to declare the beautiful scripture from Revelation that says they defeated the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, our Holy Mass, and by the word of their testimony. And so we claim defeat, right, in the victory in Jesus Christ and how he uses our lives, our words to proclaim that glory, to defeat evil, to defeat the enemy. And so We'll do ladies first, but if you guys want to give us a little background on how you came to know the Lord and in particular to embrace the Catholic faith in the way that he has called you. I love sharing a story and I thank you for the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Very um, much like a typical cradle Catholic, both mm-hmm. of my parents were very, um, they were both raised in the faith and um we were educated uh, at Catholic schools all the way through 12th grade. And my dad had a particular devotion. Um, he had um, his dad, my grandfather, was very um, much a daily mass goer and a rosary mm. prayer. So I always covered in prayer um, just deeply. I found I felt that profoundly. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as years went on through high school, um, some rough family times for mm-hmm. me. And my dad and I, my mom and dad were separated at the time. And my dad and I attended a healing mass Mm -hmm. and a worm up in Michigan um, was praying over me, laid hands on me, over me Mm -hmm. and prayed over me. I just received the gift of the Holy Spirit through, and I was just flooded with all of 
every single gift. And it was such wow. a beautiful, beautiful moment. And from that day forward, everything was for him. Wow. How old were you, Sue, at the time? I was 19. Okay. Beautiful. So just out of high school, kind of a tumultuous time period it can be, navigating into owning your adult faith coming out of high school. That's very powerful. Keep mm -hmm. going. I don't know if there's more to that other than just stating that was a profound opening. Well, I'm going to interrupt him interrupting, <laughs> which I love to do. Um, I just want to like, wow, the prayer. I love how you phrased you were covered in prayer by your grandfather, mm -hmm. a daily mass goer and a rosary prayer or it, never underestimate listeners, especially you grandparents, aunts, uncles, moms, whatever. But I think there's something special about a grandparent, right? Um, just the effect and the blessing of your prayers, whether or not you see it in that moment, just that faithfulness is so powerful. So go ahead. Amen. I, I truly believe that. I knew that my whole life. And mm -hmm. it just was that it just, everything had to come together to that moment that I was ready to receive in a more... Mm -hmm basically receiving all the sacraments confirmation, but just more fully um, yes. gifts. Magnificent. And it's good for our listeners just to reaffirm this, that by virtue of baptism, confirmation, our sacraments, we are flooded with this grace. But these opportunities of being open to the Holy Spirit fan the flame. They stir it up. So, you know, you hear the example of the chocolate at the bottom of the, you know, the milk, if you will. It can be, it's there, but it needs to be stirred up. And we shouldn't be afraid of that, right? We shouldn't be afraid in our life to, I think of Ezekiel 37 in this time in our church history. It sometimes feels for many of us like a field of dry bones. You know, we go to mass and we we go to our religious things and maybe some like the old, little ladies in the old Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Like, where's the life? Where's the spirit? Where's the vitality? Where's the healing? God desires that so much to happen, brothers and sisters. And I would say right now can be that moment to say, Lord Jesus, I am yours. Flood my soul and my mind with your Holy Spirit. I want to live for you in a new way. Any time we can do that, and parents just want to punctuate that also, that we've been given authority. We've given a special appointing and anointing by God to be, think about that. We are stewards of a love and a grace that is his. And you think of it like a sword, you know, Ephesians 6, you know, I'm a guy, my favorite passage as a kid is Ephesians, we fight not against flesh and blood. How can we battle if the sword is sitting in the sheath? Get the sword out and, and pray over your kids. Those, I'll say this, at my aged age of 55, through my decades of life, those parents and children who give testimony to parents who took the time to simply put a hand on their shoulder and say, in the name of Jesus, I just renounce the enemy. I renounce those influences, those lies, all of that. And I pray for a flooding of the Holy Spirit. I claim you for Jesus. Those simple little things that we do as parents are extraordinarily consequential. And also just to set the stage for the, the second part of the story to come when um, a recent day to give glory to God, just how you sought out community. Right. You went to this healing mass. There were, you know, certainly the priest who prayed, but just to be uh, surrounded in a special community of believers. And that's powerful in and of itself. So, so before we get there on to Jeff, Jeff, the story, the making of Jeff, the origin story of Jeff <laughs> Wayner, Superman, Spider-Man, Jeff Wayner. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to, to start, to, uh, I guess, say that I grew up in a small town called Bad Axe, Michigan. And it was yeah. cool. <laughs> well, that's just setting you up for manly success right there. Battle axe. No, bad axe. Bad I, uh, axe. I'm getting that. I'm switching the first part. I'm getting what you're alluding to, but that can go both ways. So anyways. It was great uh, in college, you know, tell people, hey, I'm from bad axe, man. You know, don't mess yeah, with me. watch out. <laughs> I love it. So there were no Catholic schools in bad axe. Uh, so I went to public schools. Um, we had a Catholic church. It, uh, we were thankful we went every Sunday. It, it wasn't necessarily the most vibrant Catholic church, um, but we showed up every Sunday. Um, and the biggest thing that probably planted the seed for me was we got a new um, uh, a pastor who embraced uh, the Steubenville conferences. And so every year uh, for youth, we uh, had Steubenville conferences that would go. And, and it's kind of ironic that um, Sue and I both growing up in Michigan and, and as part of the, the big draw to go to Steubenville is a lot of people were apprehensive is you, you on the way back, you spend a day at Cedar Point together. Huh. <laughs> now here yes. we are in Dusky, Ohio. <laughs> See how he works. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that really planted the seed for me and, and really opened my eyes and ears and my soul to um, a deeper faith uh, and a bigger, deeper love for Christ. And uh, then in college, uh, started going to those conferences as well. And then Sue and I actually met at a uh, at Eastern Michigan University at the Newman Center. Uh, oh, very and cool. Student minister uh, there at Holy Trinity. And uh, 
uh, it was such a blessing to be, especially at that part of your life. But Sue and I are such big proponents or believers in, in the Newman Center ministry and how important that is mm-hmm. at the age of people's lives because it's so easy to drift, as I did my first year in college before I got involved and found a community there. And at any rate, um, that's actually where we met. Uh, we met at a, at a Bible study. And uh, wow. uh, in fact, I remember when um, at that Bible study, when, uh, you know, I, I had seen her for the first time. And I don't know. I just felt like something was special about her. And I was asking around afterward, some of my friends, if anybody knows anything about her. And, and one of my buddies said, Jeff, she's engaged. What? I, I said, what? It's exactly Shh. that. <laughs> there oh. when I, I was so mad at God. I yeah. was. I was really, really upset because I just seemed like there was something special about her. But in his wisdom, I think it was the best thing that could have happened because I had to respect that. And I got to know mm-hmm. her as and as she got more involved in things there and retreats and whatnot, I really got to know her as a, as a friend. And that laid a, a much better foundation. Um, and as it turns out, um, I had uh, a hand in introducing, I got to know him, her uh, fiance, we became friends. He played guitar as I do and sang, we ended up uh, being, uh, doing some worship music together. And then lo and behold, um, I had a hand in introducing him to the girl. He ended up marrying, they asked me to sing at their wedding. They have five Good kids. tactic. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take what we can get, right? That's, <laughs> so that, that's, that's fascinating. Kind of, Keep going. So that's kind of where it started. And then um, what's really helped me tremendously as time has gone on, we had uh, four kids in, in four years or six years. And uh, uh, and life was pretty challenging, juggling, spinning plates a lot. Um, but our community here in Sandusky, we were able to um, really develop some wonderful friends in the faith. And what's really especially helped that is the Axe community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I were able to, uh, I was blessed to be on my first Axe retreat with you. Uh, granted, it wasn't my parish, so I didn't really know anybody at that time other than you. I knew you, I knew you a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and since then, um, uh, we have gotten the Axe program going in Sandusky, and it's been incredibly, incredibly vibrant. And for me, I'm just so blessed to be um, a part of that Uh I think I've been able to, to be on all of them um, as the music director. And it, it it's developed such deep roots in our community where we know each other as brothers in Christ. Um, we put on our armor, you know, uh, together. We pray for each other uh, together. Uh, and especially through the, the, the trials and tribulations that we all have. And as we had earlier this year, um, <laughs> I mean, it's just so, so special that, that we had that to call upon our, our prayer warriors and our time of need. So that's a little bit of my background. Jeff Wayner is the title of the book, From Battle Axe to Battle ACTS. Battle Axe to Battle Axe. <laughs> I like that, It just Greg. flows out of me. What can I say? No, that's that's magnificent. You know, Jeff, a word here before we um, really dive into incredible blessing story that has been unveiling over the last few years that really pronounced God's goodness in community and all matters Catholic. Um, I love that you played guitar and led worship and that you still do. Uh, Being an older guy myself, um, leading worship, I think, is one of the most consequential things. If you have that gift, any of you who are listening and play an instrument and think it's dated, it is extremely influential, I think, for our children to hear us and to have us lead when we can worship, certainly any music, I think. But music is the language of the soul, and um, it is just such a blessing. And I hear too many. like I'll hear friends my age, maybe a little little, little younger, and say, I used to play guitar or Keep doing it. I mean, even if it seems awkward or weird because you're a 50 year old guy who's, you know, slinging the axe, boy, this is just going to keep coming out. Uh, no, but, but what a blessing is. And Steph, you were just sharing, you know, how recently that was a reflection on our son, Joseph, and and where he's at, just that it, it impacts our children. So if I could interrupt real quick to, to share that story. So in our family group chat a few weeks ago, someone had put a link to Upper Room like their Sunday worship service or something. And Greg and I were in the car driving back from the Detroit airport, I believe. And um, so I clicked on it and they were singing one of Joseph's songs that Mm -hmm. he had written. And so to have this very, you know, respected, large, fill in the adjective, right? Um, Worship experience that was certainly well attended there, but also many people tune into the streaming on Sunday mornings uh, to hear them, singing a song that Joseph wrote and, you know, record whatever. And so I got so choked up and Greg, I looked at Greg and, you know, he took it understandably. So as like, wow, you know, praise God. Like there's, they're praising God with Joseph's praising God. And this is our son. And how cool is that? 
But actually, maybe I should have been thinking that, <laughs> that I was overwhelmed with God's goodness in picturing little Joseph running around in his little diaper at 18 months or however old he would have been, and Greg sitting on our couch in our first home, praising with his guitar and Joseph and his little chubby fingers strumming and dancing around and his form of worship with whatever babble, you know, that he was expressing. And I was, that's where I went. That's where the Lord took my heart. And I just, I'm like, this Greg is because of you, like your heart for the Lord, your heart for our father in heaven and how nothing is inconsequential. Like he uses it all. Right. So yes. Awesome. Praise God that Joseph, you know, signed a deal with Provident through Sony and, you know, will be releasing his album. And I pray that the Lord just uses that tremendously and so grateful as parents that he's using those gifts to bring glory to God. But for a mother and wife heart, it was like, picturing those little moments are never little mm -hmm. and the Lord uses it. So anyway, thank you. Thank you all. Well, thank <laughs> you. Letting me share that. So we're oh, going to shift it. Go ahead. Can I one more thing to that? Yes. I, yes. Uh, music, uh, for me, music is so special to my, in my soul. One of the, the things that I struggle with in my faith is in my prayer time, oftentimes my mind, my mind just wanders. It just does. Mm -hmm. I've seen things going on, uh, a busy career, a big family, uh, and music for me is my favorite form of prayer because it helps me shut this off, my brain off and be where my heart is. And I love sharing that with others, whether it be through math, the mass uh, at the mass or um, um, retreats, or we have an event you know, coming up uh, August 20th at the Riverboat River Basin in Huron uh, Auditorium. And uh, I've never done anything like that before, but I'm so excited, you know, because like I said, it is my favorite form of prayer. Uh, and it's neat that's scriptural as, as, as well, too, that that's, you know, um, bring glory to God. And uh, I forget which saint said uh, uh, singing is like praying twice or is it singing well is like praying twice. Uh, maybe I think that. singing well, but we like to leave out the well part. St. Augustine, yes. <laughs> well, and I like Rich Mullins' infamous statement that if God gave you a bad voice, torture him with it. So bring it yeah. to him anyways. Lift him up anyways. So, folks, so blessed to be with you. Ignite Radio Live. Again, all our other great programs you can hear at IgniteRadioLive.com. We're with Jeff and Sue Wayner in our wonderful community. And I just want to give you guys the stage to share with us uh, a powerful story in your family that I'm sure continues to unveil. But I, I want to just peek it by saying some of you right now may be asking again, just feel the dry bones. Where is God? Is he present? Is he real? Does he love us? Does he have a purpose for suffering and discomfort and difficulty? Um, are these sacraments real? Is this community real? Or is that just kind of like a nice mythical thing, charade that we go through for 2000 years, the best, and we just pat ourselves on the back. For those of you who come to this conversation with a question mark, I validate that question mark if you're open to the answer. I validate the question marks that you have come in before God right now with the difficult questions of your life. And here at least an example through Jeff and Sue sharing their story about how God truly loves us and is with us. The stage is yours. You are listening to a very special episode of IgniteRadioLive.com. We encourage you to really receive all the graces being poured out this summer in your marriage and family, but begin to anticipate a great family adventure beginning in September. We're calling it Supreme Makeover Home Edition. Eight weeks of talking and praying in your home with phenomenal gathered monthly events leading into November 3rd and 4th, Sanctus Eucharistic Family Revival, led by the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. That's right, the Franciscan Friars of Renewal. They're amazing. They're going to be coming and leading this tremendous family and marriage event on November 3rd and 4th. We want to give you a ground floor opportunity to get on board. You can do that at catholicrevival.us. And now back to our program. Adeline um, started showing signs of illness on Sunday. And Adeline's our seven-year-old daughter. Seven-year-old daughter um, on a Sunday. And three days later. How long so ago? This year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It was Valentine's Day. She was life mm -hmm. Um And to speak to pouring into your children, I would like to reiterate the, the only words that Alan really spoke throughout the whole journey, which is when we first got to the hospital. Um, and we took her into the emergency room and talk about how important it is to just really pray for your children and to bring them to mass, go to daily mass with them, pray the rosary with them. Because um, in the very first couple hours of her treatment, 
that um, the respiratory therapist had asked us or had asked Adeline, is this breathing treatment making you feel better? And Adeline said, no, God is. And then oh. she looked at me like, wait, did she, what did she say? And I said, well, ask her again. And so Ad, she asked her again and Adeline said, no, God is. And I held on to those words because that was breathing life back into me throughout the journey that was to come. Um, and so, so from that, that moment just anchored me in, in reminded me of who was in control and who had Adeline. I mean, God had Adeline the entire time, every step of the way. He had each one of us wrapped in his peace, in his grace, in his love throughout the entire journey, mm. which was so beautiful and reassuring. And I will also share um, a really important part of the journey that um, when we first heard that she was, she had pneumonia and um, that she needed to be life lighted. And um, so we were getting ready and preparing to do that. And they almost didn't have enough oxygen for her to get that 30 minute flight. So they were really going through the calculations of what percent of oxygen at what level. And, you know, we have 33 minutes of oxygen, but we have a 29 minute flight. So they were radioing back and forth about like, how you have to have two tanks at the landing pad um, to be able to um, make it into the emergency and up into the PICU. So it was definitely um, frightening conversation, but in the midst of that, there was a piece that just, again, surpassed mm. understanding, human understanding of having a child just before you that was running around on Saturday night with her siblings wrestling and playing and laughing and jumping. And, and then just on that Tuesday to be um, on the brink and um, having everything shut down on her. But I do mm -hmm. want to, um, on that helicopter ride, that was a very beautiful time. I was able to ride with her, but I was in the front with the pilot and it was a, a beautiful prayer time. It was this um, 30 minute uh, opportunity to offer everything that we were going to be going through to him. And I prayed that everything that we were going through or that we were going to be going through with her would just bring God glory. Mm. Every, of it. every, every, and we didn't know what was ahead. I didn't know how serious it was. It was even more serious as we got there to rainbow. Um, the very first thing that they, the words that they used were respiratory failure. And then secondly, it was heart failure and then it was kidney failure. So they called it um, toxic shock. Um, so it was actually invasive strep A that she had, which is the, the most serious form of strep, but it, for, in, for some reason in some kids, it disables their immune system and they don't know why. So mm -hmm. her immune system could not fight back. So she also had pneumonia, but the reason why they life lighted her wasn't for the pneumonia per se. It was because they, uh, uh, they thought that she may be going into septic shock and she was, um, mm -hmm. and it, it, when kids, when this happens to them, um, they hide it until they just crash. And that's what happened to her when she got there, all of her organs were shutting down. And then they, uh, they said, uh, that she needed to be on something called ECMO, which is a life support, um, along with a ventilator and, and the dialysis. And she had to have a heart procedure eventually. Uh, as well. Um, it literally was a Hail Mary um, to buy her some time uh, physically in, in hopes that she would be able to recover. And when this happens to kids, the doctor told us um, initially, he said, it's about a 50-50 chance of survival. And we just were in shock. You know, we would have, she was perfectly healthy just a few days earlier. Um, and we found out after the fact from our pediatrician after she came through this, that and she said, when, when this happens to kids, it's more like a 10 to 15% chance of survival. Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, nothing prepares you, you know, uh, as, as a parent, uh, outside of faith to, you know, for, for this, you think, you know, Hey, is a father pick me, you know, <laughs> but, <Right>. but <clears throat> daughter, you know, who was just a joyful little girl. She sang with me a mass before, you know, just a very joyful, the, uh, uh faith filled little girl. Um, so, um, so I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but um. well, if can I interrupt the interrupter again? <laughs> so I, I'm tearing up. I can't even imagine. And when we first heard and we began praying, we were very emotional. Like you're saying, take pick me, right? You know, as a parent. But I just, as I was listening to you, Sue, the scripture verse that we proclaimed at the beginning of this this show was ringing in my ears. So not only in the front seat 
of that helicopter next to the pilot were you defeating the enemy just with your faith and your prayer. But the fact that you're proclaiming it now and kind of like declaring it once again, right? Like that is your cooperation with that grace of the moment and your choices that prepared you in faith up to that moment. My goodness, like what a witness, what a witness of your love of Christ, of your trust. And I mean, that can't be underscored enough. So um, yes. So go ahead. I'm sorry. So um, to jump, I guess to jump back to that, um, the grace that was poured out um, by the Holy Spirit that moment when I was 19, I feel mm. like everything from that point forward, um, growing in faith, growing in knowledge of scripture, um, in ministry, helping in ministry with walking with purpose, um, with acts, everything was preparing me and um, I guess building up that armor. And I felt like it was this opportunity Interestingly, in our Walking with Purpose, um, they have a, a once every few weeks, they'll have a video and they share um, just different words of wisdom. And Lisa Brennickmeyer was sharing um, in her recent video right before this all happened. Um, when given the platform um, to be able to give God the glory, then you need to take it. This is this mm -hmm. point. And I had those, I had that inside of me. And I felt like this was like this moment that we could offer everything to him. And, and I didn't know, I honestly, we didn't know where it was going to go, but we knew God had her. And um, it was just that moment that I could give back to him what, I mean, he so freely gave to me. I mean, it cost me nothing. I just went to him and he poured out that grace on me. I just felt like it was this opportunity to give back to him um, all that he's blessed us with our family, um, with Jeff. And so um, it was an honor to be able to do that. And I just praise God for just being with us every moment. Amazing. Let's go back, if you will, to that moment when things were going south quickly. Healthy girl, and then suddenly things are going south to the point where you know you need to call. And at that moment, you don't know how this is going to end up. I mean, th there's a critical moment, right, where, where you're calling for help, and you don't know what the conclusion of this is. How did the family respond? So um, we have, again, we have five children. Our oldest is 24, Kristen. And uh, she is a nurse. And so she, mm. being the oldest ringleader, was a great communicator that helped us be able to provide communication to the community. Um, and then our second is Catherine. She's 22. Brendan, um, he is 21. And Nathan is 18. And then there's a 10-year gap. Uh, that's how, how Alan fits into this. We had had four miscarriages in a row. And, uh, and Sue always said she at the dinner table, she would say multiple times, she would say, I just feel like somebody's missing at our dinner table. Mm -hmm. and, and it got to the point where after those painful miscarriages four in a row, we were in our mid forties <laughs> and it just seemed like it must not be in your plans, Lord. And, uh, so we got rid of some of our baby stuff and got a dog and that's when we found out we're expecting. And I call that the Lazarus syndrome, how the good Lord, oftentimes he waits until you think there is no hope. And that's mm -hmm. when he makes Move, or I heard it said before, it's when you get to the end of yourself is when you get to the beginning of God. And so she mm. was a miracle when we had her and, uh, you know, she's, uh, uh, another miracle again. So I think the good Lord has plans for all of us, but you know, I think he's got something special planned for her. <laughs> Amen. So I think that's when we met at the conference. I, would you have just, you were pregnant, I believe, and you guys were ecstatically happy. Like it was so evident, the joy of being pregnant after all those years, right? And just, and I remember after she was born, seeing pictures and, and hearing people talk of the siblings just elated beyond anything and just loving her and so grateful for her. And um, which isn't always the case, unfortunately, right? So just like, what a witness, as you're saying, Jeff, echoing your words, like from the beginning, certainly a miracle, but just the joy and how she pulled everything and everybody together. So a couple of things I want to punctuate here and take it a little further. Number one is for those of us, you, those of you who are listening, which would include us who've lost a child in any way, but due to miscarriage, every bit of soul destined for eternity, known by God, has a name, all of that. You got a saint in heaven pulling for you, a personalized saint. The Catholic Church, of course, acknowledges the capital S saints through the various processes that we have confidence in life. But anybody who dies in the state of grace innocently is a saint. 
is with God for all eternity, and we should call upon them and ask for their intercession and prayers. So that's point number one, amazing family saints. Now, you said four in a row. I just have to ask the question, were there others that, if you will, were out of the in the row thing? Did you have others, miscarriages besides the four? Between um, our two girls, between Kristen and Catherine, we had one more miscarriage. Okay, so five. And of course, our beloved friends, the Finleys and others who you give great testimony to, uh, again, saints and heaven. So that's point one, two. So you you gave witness and you're giving witness right now to something that the world very much needs to hear. When I got married, uh, the punctu- uh, the statement was, my life's not my own, my sleep's not my own, my resources aren't my own, nothing is my own. With each child, it was just another punctuation mark at the end of that sentence. My life is really, really not my own. My sleep is really, and and I don't know if many can get that. And even many good Catholics, right, who who are young and and they know they're gonna, you know, faithfully follow the church. But there's a sense of not that it isn't, you know, you don't have fatigue and all the challenges of what it means to be a parent. But just what you're radiating and is unspoken. I want to proclaim and just acknowledge your your atmosphere was one of being open to God's grace and confident that what He calls you to, He provides for, and the joy of that, and that it had to be felt like an experience when you found this out, when this was going south, you had four other children who I assume their first response, and we could turn in two ways here. We could turn one, just like a fatalistic, dear God, uh, crying out maybe for the first time in our lives and not really knowing him. Or what I suspect happened was they do know God. They know he's a loving God and they know that he listens and they know that he wants us to call upon him. And he allows these circumstances. Why? To forge us, to forge us for holiness, to forge us for intimacy. As you think back, what look at your spiritual eyes. What, what do you think God was doing in those moments with your marriage and your family? Well, I'm going to interrupt that question. Of course you are. Because we didn't let you answer the first question. Oh, about your kids. So you went through their names and ages. So what was going on with them as this was all beginning to happen? I think all of them, well, if you want to say, Kristen and Catherine were there at the very beginning when we were at Firelands before we were um, life lighted to Rainbow Babies. And so they knew that that it was serious, obviously. And um, they packed a bag immediately as I was flying with Adeline, they packed a bag and were driving up to Cleveland kind of behind us. And they were there from minute one. Um, and Brendan, our son, is at Bowling Green. So he was actually at school at the moment. Um, and I think the girls called um, the girls called him. And our youngest, Nathan, who was in high school at the time, was in the middle of school. And um, we chose to wait until um, the end of that school day, which was two. So we had, I think we were there about two hours. Um, and they were all there by the time, I think. Um, so the girls were there right away. And then I think the boys were there by four or five o'clock. Um, mm. So instantaneously, and they didn't want to leave her side. Um, wow. They, they were, I call them the pick you crew um, because we were all there the entire time for up until, I think it was up until she was off of ECMO. Well, and then there were uh, boyfriends and girlfriends involved and, and uh, as well. It was it, one special thing I, uh, I'll never forget is when um, our uh, two of our parish priests, our associate pastors, um, mm. both came up and uh, were pretty close with them, and um, they gave her the anointing of the sick. And in addition to that, because uh, they they actually got permission from the bishop to give her her confirmation. Um, wow. He had not had her first communion. It was her first communion year, uh, and uh, uh, so that was such a special memory of us all gathered around her. And of course she didn't look herself uh, at all, a lot, very swollen. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it just, um, uh, it, it, the odds weren't good for her, at least from a, from a worldly perspective. Um, um, but, uh, I'll just never forget how that praying over her and just that it, like, like, um, uh, what's his, uh, what's his name? Kelly, um, uh, the, written all the books. Uh, he talks about <laughs> Matthew Kelly, holy moments. He talks mm-hmm. about holy and to grasp onto those holy moments. And, and for me, that was a um, certainly uh, uh, a holy moment that I will never forget. Um, yeah. Seeing her in that state and receiving um, you know, the sacrament, uh, you know, uh, as well. In all of the children's hands. We were we had all of our hands on Evelyn, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and the staff. I don't know that they'd had experienced that that someone would find that very. Um, essential, like first line essential, like that's what, we're, you know, that's more, I mean, obviously the medical care that we were receiving was absolutely incredible. Um, and I have all respect mm-hmm. for everything, mm-hmm. um, every medical professional provided for Adeline because it was absolutely beautiful and uh, brilliant minds that God's mm-hmm. given to be able to do those things. Um, but 
the witness of our whole family surrounding her with our hands on her. And my mother was able to be there as well with her hands on Adeline. Um, it was a truly, truly blessed, blessed, holy moment um, with her. And we really, truly knew that God had her 100%. And um, there was such a peace, um, mm. such a hope, because mm. like either way, God had her. So. We really so, had a, a piece that could only come from him as Sue shared. And I'll just want to reiterate what she said. When, when, when you go through this, you never think something like this is going to happen to you or to your child or to your family. And, and we had an unexplainable um, piece through this that, um, that he, it could only come from him, that he had her um, and that he was going to use this situation for his glory, no matter the outcome. And that gave us so much peace that mm. in that storm, and we just like, like I said, we, we never know when those storms of life are going to come. Um, and even every morning um, when we stayed at the Ronald McDonald house in downtown Cleveland, and uh, we kind of, it was such a blessing that place was for us just to have a, a place to um, try to get a little bit of rest and be out of the hospital setting for a little bit, be, be so close that every morning when we would get up, we would feel like we were putting on the armor of God. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and we were, you know, yes. but he just didn't know what the day was going to bring. But we had that peace that he had this and that he was with us. Doesn't mean he was going to take away the pain. It doesn't mean he was, you know, she was going to come through this. Um, we, we felt like he was going to, but we didn't know, you know, but he was walking with us. And, and that peace could only come from him that uh, he had this no matter the outcome. And, and whenever things happen to all of us listeners in life and we've all had experiences and we're going to have more of them. Um, and I guess the bottom line is that um, it, it's through those difficult moments that we need most to bring us closer to him mm. and glory, just like that Lazarus syndrome, you know, per se. And I've, you never realize it, it. For me, it brings it to life when you're in that moment and you just don't know mm -hmm. when that's going to come. And I'm grateful that we had the armor of God to prepare us. And we had that peace and our community praying for her um, uh, through this um, it was just so, so special. Um, so Amen. I was going to say that the mystical body of Christ, that we are connected, not just body, but soul connected to a host of heavenly angels and saints. And that God wants us not simply to lift our prayers to him, but to invite others, to invite others to join us, that we're, we're depriving others of an occasion of connecting with God and the intimacy, which we all yearn a community, right? Especially when there's something fragile and, and in need of prayer that we rally around that brings us together. I'm just going to state this. When we have these needs, social media can be a transformative occasion to unite the body of Christ in prayer. And I think very few, I don't fault them for that. I just ask you, any of you out there appropriately, right? For whatever that need may be to consider the ways in which you sharing particular prayer needs are occasions of uniting people. And just a few that I have here on Tuesday, February 21st, last year at 6.30 a.m., update by Rob, Sue Wainer, Jeff Wainer family. Quote, God, wow, amazing news from Kristen last night. God answered our prayers. Adeline is off the ECMO machine. Woohoo! Three exclamation points, all kinds of awesome meme, little thingies, emojis. That's our girl. God is so good. Hashtag Adeline Strong. Today, please join us in thanking God for Adeline's impressive progress. Yesterday, in thanking God ahead of time for the successful removal of the kidney dialysis and or ventilator today. Folks, just a little bit pulling off of this. Thanking him ahead of time. Th thank God for what he's already going to do because he wants us to turn to him and he's already got those plans for us. I'll continue. He took the child, this is a scripture passage from Mark 5, 41. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise from Padre Pio. Pray, hope, and don't worry. And then she concludes, Jesus, we trust in you. Thank you again for all your fervent prayers for Adeline. Tell me that doesn't, again, end of, of Facebook post clip reverberating throughout the planet. Tell me that that doesn't just fill people with a sense of awareness of God's presence and glory and that what he's doing. And, there, and I should say, form the right perspective that many who are facing similar circumstances as they are right now, this is the mindset God wants us to have, to be united with others. And, and we may feel weak. We may feel struggling and, and overburdened by all the, whatever may be happening there. But what an occasion, again, to plug into the mystical body of Christ. I could do one more. 
Thursday, February 23rd from Sue. Thank you for your commitment to praying for Adeline every day. Please join us today as we thank God for the progress Adeline made yesterday. And we thank God ahead of time, again, Father Salinas Casey, for Jeff and Sue receiving only all good news from Adeline's MRI today. Again, the quote, which worth repeating again, he took the child by hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. Mark 541 and Padre Pio, pray hope and don't worry. I'll say that again. Any of you listening right now who are facing this yourself or somebody in your family who's in need of knowing God's grace, you're in a place of vulnerability. By the way, he allows our poverty so we can experience his provision. I'll say that again. He allows our poverty so that we turn to him and can experience his provision. Jesus, we trust in you. You are listening to a very special episode of IgniteRadioLive.com. We encourage you to really receive all the graces being poured out this summer in your marriage and family, but begin to anticipate a great family adventure beginning in September. We're calling it Supreme Makeover Home Edition. Eight weeks of talking and praying in your home with phenomenal gathered monthly events leading into November 3rd and 4th, Sanctus Eucharistic Family Revival, led by the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. That's right, the Franciscan Friars of Renewal. They're amazing. They're going to be coming and leading this tremendous family and marriage event on November 3rd and 4th. We want to give you a ground floor opportunity to get on board. You can do that at catholicrevival.us. And now back to our program. What was it like that he put you in a unique place that you, I want to say, used in the best sense of the word with your primary concern, obviously, for Laddie, but you had a sense of God has a bigger plan for this than just Addie being healed. I mean, that, that's that's remarkable. I mean, talk about that a little bit. Give witness maybe to all of us who maybe think that these are just our own privatized cells and we need to just kind of keep them to ourselves. You saw the whole sense of that one leper of the 10 who went and gave praise and thanks and returned and thanks God and thanked God. You have that heart. Even even in the midst of it, because even though they were, you know, obviously great news and her being able to be taken, taken off of certain machines and such, she still was in the hospital, right? She was still experiencing the need for more healing. So, and to have that heart in the midst of that, to be able to acknowledge where the Lord has brought it, but so many people would focus on, the half empty instead of the half full. I think um, the thing that comes to my mind is um, as you look at scripture passages, there were many healings that happened instantaneously. And so Paul knocked off his horse and blinded and, and people healed instantly from touching his garment. Um, in Adeline's case, I believe, um, I, I know he has a purpose for everything. And I love how he's brought her through um, in his timing and mm-hmm. everything the beauty of her being able to receive the sacraments, um, those two then that very next day in the hospital, but then also recently her first Holy communion, which Mm. was so beautiful. Um, and she has had, um, since she's been home, she's had, uh, speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and all things are coming together beautifully. She's doing remarkably well. And I believe that, um, this is all God's timing Mm. and it's just, it's still yet more opportunity for us to give um, praise and glory to God for all that he has done in her life. And I also think that what um, it really brings to me is that God has not only healed Adeline as, and is continuing to heal Adeline, but he has really just flooded our community um, in so many ways with the gift of faith mm-hmm. through this. And that I've had multiple people approach me and say, I know, I don't, I know you don't know me, but I just want to share that you um, just your witness of faith in our community has just really um, resonated. And thank you for sharing that gift of faith. And I think I'm not, a, I don't love social media myself, but I do think if there's a time and um, you know, we were made for such time as this, and this is the time that we're living in. So we can do that. And I just pray that the things that we are sharing would continue to give him glory. But I do believe that the timing of everything has all been up to him. And I think about the amazing people I've met since we've been home, the medical professionals, that I've been able, been able to give witness to what God's been doing in our lives and in our community. We had um, some friends of ours that on the day that Adeline was life on Valentine's Day, by the way, she was kind of a, 
uh, upset about all this because, you know, she was so looking forward to her Valentine's parties at school, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know? But she got to have a helicopter ride. She doesn't remember much about it. But when she ended up coming home, she just assumed she was going to get a helicopter ride home and that she could enjoy the view. You know, but yeah. <laughs> I love it. But we had some friends of ours, um, dear friends, who they made a commitment when she was lifelighted to pray for her online, on social media, on Facebook, every day for 15 to 20 minutes every day with our community. Whoever could join would could join live or they could watch the replay of it. And they would have the, the scripture reading uh, of Mark uh, chapter 5, verse 41, the Talitha um, little girl arise. Mm-hmm. They would do a litany of healing and they would give an update on her progress every day and what specifically to pray for. Uh, not only for Adeline, but all for her healthcare providers on that that, that particular day. And the power of that prayer uh, <laughs> uh, was just amazing. We were so deeply touched by that. And so many people, as Sue said, um, I, I was seeing how many uh, multiple people that I know um, uh, aren't really prayer people um, joining in on that and how the good Lord was using that situation. But, you know, so she was she, uh, when you, when the kids go on the, the, the ECMO life support, um, if you're one of the few to survive, you're usually on it for at least a good month. She was off of that in less than a week. Wow. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> then so she has Cleveland Clinic Rehab Center for Kids, and she was only there for three weeks. Normally, you're there for a pretty lengthy period of time. She had to learn how to walk again. And, uh, you know, she had so the issues on the left side of her body wasn't working as, as well as her right side. And you just don't know, you know, where things are going to be. And we were just happy she was, um, you know, still with us, but her progress all the way around was incredible. And she came home on um, after 50 days of being gone, 50 days. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what's, <laughs> <there's>, what's the <laughs> significance of 50? I don't know. I look in the Bible. What's Pentecost. This, yeah. right? <laughs> and by the way, that happened right before Easter, she yeah. was home. Yeah. So it, what a, what a special Easter that was for our family to be able to celebrate, you know, um, the resurrection with her being, home with us. And then, then, you know, Pentecost after that, a divine mercy Sunday where we had an Allen uh, or at a gratitude event, give thanks to God uh, for her healing with our community uh, at a, an outdoor shelter pavilion. And it was just a beautiful day, you know, for that too, to give, awesome. give thanks mm. for where that was due. And our community had events too. Uh, they had a, a holy hour in front of the, in front of the blessed sacrament. Uh, to pray uh, for Adeline for her healing on the day that she was lifelighted. They pulled that together last minute. And it was church was packed. We weren't there, obviously, but we were told we saw pictures of it. And it was packed. And then a month later, they had another adoration um, event uh, and Thanksgiving that she was out of the, the rainbow babies and uh, uh, was recovering mm. at the rehab center for kids. And I think such a special part of that is our, our community. It's just a great, uh, I, I think our, our faith is never meant um, to be, it's personal, but it's not private. And I think mm-hmm. we're, well put. We, I think we fall short as Catholics sometimes. I mean, the Eucharist is a source and summit of our faith, um, but we also need community. We weren't made uh, to live the walk this faith life alone. I'm speaking maybe a little bit more to the men um, because in our arrogance, oftentimes, you know, we just think, Hey, I'm a, I'm a man. I got this, you know, and uh, um, nothing can be further from the truth. And, and, and I, I've noticed this more on the acts retreats, and it's such a had such a big impact on my life and and people that are so apprehensive and kicking and screaming going. Um, but when they show up there, it's just amazing. When you give the good Lord time, mm-hmm. one time to take a time out, what what's what's working in my life, what's not? Um, you know, what do I need to get better at? Because I love to use sports analogies and and you know, how good would a sports team be if they never took a time out and reevaluated, or never really had much of a strategy, mm-hmm. right? Because the opponent has one. And so the best defense is a good offense. And mm. so we'll be able to put on that armor of God and prepare our souls and our hearts for, for when those storms of life come, that we are equipped better to, to handle that, to use that for his glory. And I believe that's what our acts community did for us. It was no accident. It was a, not a coincidence, a God incidence that when we went to mass um, at uh, rainbow, they had once a, once a week, they had mass there that we went to as a family mm. and, uh, uh, we met someone I was talking to after mass and asking her for prayers, uh, for Adeline. And, uh, she was a prayer warrior for us. She showed up the next day, uh, at rainbow with a, uh, um, a third class relic of Pat San Padre Pio, who wow. I had been calling on, we had been calling on for his intercession. And by the way, to preface this with acts, we went on an acts mission retreat in DC. 
I'll never forget with Father Dave Nuss, uh, he was our uh, pastor leading us that, and when the retreatants were coming, that was the feast day of St. Padre Pio. Uh, mm. And uh, I remember Father Dave speaking about, um, uh, sharing about some stories of Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio, and one of the ones that you we used a lot in this was, and he used uh, in his homily, the try to use the Italian accent, you know, play, ho, and don't worry, you know, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. sounds so much better in Italian accent yeah. wise, right? <laughs> yes. So folks, you are tuned into Ignite Radio Live with Greg and Stephanie Schleter. So blessed to have Jeff and Sue Wainer give witness to God and his glory in a very <laughs> difficult circumstance of their life. Um, with the balance of our time, I want to raise a difficult consideration from this um, that I know you're able to, we can discuss. And that is a number watching this right now are listening, are grieving the loss of a child. They are Catholic. They go to mass. They pray the novenas. They post it online. They had family and friends rally around them in every way. And it didn't turn out this way for them. And some could perhaps be watching this. And we know the message is not, well, if you're faithful enough or prayerful enough, your child's going to make it through. This could have been a what if situation. You know, what if? What if it had gone in another direction? I don't know if you've ever imagined that or wondered, you know, how how might our faith have been impacted or how is, how is, how would God have been working through that circumstance? Have you thought about that? Absolutely. And, and I'm not trying to um, uh, compare that when when. And things could have just as easily not turned out the way the same way. Look what happened to Job. And I'm not comparing us to Job at all. You know, um, although when we were in hospital, our dog died too. <laughs> yeah, compare. Go ahead. <laughs> we're thinking, okay, Lord, you know, so there's a lot going on here. But I guess, um, I, I guess, I think just surrendering to his will is what we're called to do. And sometimes we think we know better, but he is God and we are not. And there is, uh, there was someone who reached out to us. Um, I reached out to me on social media um, from uh, the mother of a little girl who a month earlier uh, had passed from the same thing. Mm. And, six. Mm. and it just broke my heart. And, um, and she said, uh, I still haven't met her, but we've communicated on social media. And she said, I got to believe, I know they're Catholic. I got to believe that um, their, uh, their little girl is um, praying for Adeline uh, and help her mm. help fight this and trying to be uh, a guardian angel for her. And I guess my, the point of this whole thing is we are called to pray for each other and we need each other as a, as a community. And so, um, you know, in, in the tragedies of life, I kind of think of, um, you know, where you think there were two um, apostles uh, that had pretty extreme outcomes. One, uh, Judas and his sin, you know, he turned away from God and that didn't end well. Um, Peter, um, you know, uh, denied Christ three times, but he, mm -hmm. he turned to God in his sin. Um, and things worked out pretty well, obviously it became, you know, the, the rock, uh, that Jesus said. And so our job is to continue to turn to him in good times and in bad and all things, uh, will, will, I think work out for the, to the will of God when that happens. And I want to share one other uh, a scripture, if I Please. may, one of the things that we drew strength from when all this was going on is we were able to, uh, when Adeline was unconscious, uh, we would go to a walking distance to Little Italy, and there was a Catholic church there, or there is a Holy, um, Holy Rosary Catholic Church. And we needed grace. We needed you know, the, the, the sacraments. And uh, so that was our place to go to sneak away. Um, uh, tried, we tried to do it every day and uh, um, just lay it at his feet. And, uh, and it's amazing how, um, how when you turn to him, how he gives you those little signs um, and little things that you need just to get you through. And I want to share um, one of my favorite um, readings one particular day when she was at a, a very early critical critical time. This is from uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. It says, My son, when you come to serve the Lord, stand in justice and fear. Prepare yourself for trials. Be sincere of heart and steadfast. Incline your ear and receive the word of understanding, mm -hmm. undisturbed in time of adversity. Mm -hmm. Wait on God with patience. Cling to him and forsake him not. Thus you will be wise in all your ways. Accept whatever befalls you. When sorrowful, be steadfast. And in crushing misfortune, be patient. For in fire, gold and silver are tested. Trust God and God will help you. Trust in him and he will direct your way. Keep his fear and grow old therein. You who fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Turn not away, lest you fall. 
You who fear the Lord, trust him, and your reward will not be lost. You who fear the Lord, hope for good things, for lasting joy and mercy. You who fear the Lord, love him, and your hearts will be enlightened. Study the generations long past and understand, has anyone hoped in the Lord and been disappointed? Has anyone persevered in his commandments and been forsaken? Has anyone called upon him and been rebuffed? Mm. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord. He forgives sins, saves in times of trouble, and he is a protector of all who seek him in truth. Man, has that come alive, did that scripture come alive? Uh, and we clung to that. And then, by the way, the responsorial psalm for that day was, commit your life to the Lord and he will help you. That's so beautiful. Wow. See, the, just the Lord's timing of it all. I, just a couple random thoughts. Gosh, thank you guys so much. Um, I love the John Paul II quote, suffering unleashes love. Mm. So what an opportunity this cross, you know, gave in your suffering and your family's suffering and Adeline's suffering to unleash the love and faith, right, of the community, certainly there in the Sandusky area, but also throughout the world, you know, people were praying for her and, you know, the gathering together. You mentioned um, the Holy Eucharist, Jeff. I love, Greg will often say, can I quote you, honey? Is it okay to quote you in your presence? I'd be honored. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, you know, Holy Communion should flow into holy community. And that's, you know, what how you phrased it so beautifully too, is yes, you know, our faith is personal, but it's not private, you mm -hmm. know, and just to be able to live out as we're called to as Catholics, the Holy Eucharist. And again, just want to praise God and give him glory through your words. Eucharist is Thanksgiving and you guys have done that. And in regards to the the tougher question that Greg asked about, you know, other people who haven't, whose prayer hasn't been answered in the same way. One, I want to underscore again, you guys from the beginning, you know, certainly you wanted her, right, to get well, but you seemed very surrendered to accepting whatever the Lord had in store and planned for you. And that that in and of itself is such a grace and brings glory. And I think, I don't know, as listening to your words too, I just kept hearing you know, God is no less present, mm. regardless of what his answer is, right? He is no less present in the situation, regardless of the outcome. You Amen. know, he is still the same loving God, the still still the same faithful God, still the same good God. And um, we just praise him for his answer in this prayer, right? And for her continued healing and your continued witness to bring him glory. And I just, we were so moved and we were blessed in praying for all of you, but also... We were incredibly blown away by your community's response and the priests who were so present and the just how they rallied and gathered and the love outpoured. Gosh, you know, just the God alive and well in his church, right? What a witness of hope and gratitude and faith. So our nonprofit is called Image Trinity, and it's after the John Paul II quote, you know, families become who you are which is an image of the Trinity, that outpouring of love. And just listening to this beautiful story, you know, from when you guys first started and sharing, you know, the life flight and just my teary eyes and my heart, you know, but just the beautiful, again, witness of that continual, continual outpouring of love that you guys have as husband and wife, you know, into your children in a special way, Adeline and the community, right? It's just that self-gift after self-gift after self-gift that brings about the Trinity. And that's what we're created mm -hmm. to be. And through this and the continuation of what a witness, you know, to the Trinity, you mentioned the, you know, the different feasts that, that Addie was be able to be a part of. And my gosh, the laying of the hands with your kids and you guys and your mom, I can't even imagine. Wow. Talk about a holiest of moments, but the, um, just that incredible feast of the Holy Trinity that was thrown in there also just amazing. But Sue, I want to hear your yeah, wisdom us, and insights. Well, you were asking about, um, other families experiencing this and not getting the news that they were hoping and praying for. And I just wanted to speak to that because, um, because I, I want to, I want to read it. I know we said that either way, whatever happened um, for his glory. But what I just keep coming back to is that we know that we're more than our bodies and that we know where we're going and who mm -hmm. just where, but to whom we are going and we're going to be with Jesus. So mm -hmm. I having a 
personal relationship with Jesus, knowing that that's where Adeline and who Adeline would be with was so comforting to me, even though I know it would have broken my heart to not physically be with her and to be able to hold her any longer, but prayerfully one day that we would be joining her um, Mm -hmm. with Jesus. So that was, uh, and that was the hope that we had in our hearts, knowing, um, knowing who God is. Mm. I think that that's, um, you know, all that we've done in all of the things um, that have led up to this point with her that had prepared our hearts to have this happen. Um, the daily mass, the rosaries, the adoration that, you know, we've been praying. And I feel like those things, those graces that were given to us to have that hope that was so strong and that peace that was so strong and that grace that just filled us um, that we knew um, either way again, and it would have been completely devastating to, to physically mm. Ellen in our lives and the joy that she does bring um, to, to know who she was going to be with. Mm. Gave us Thank you for that. The only thing greater than our desire for those who have gone before us, the only thing greater than our desire for them to be with us is their desire for us to be with them. Um, in eternity. And all of us here, the miscarriages, the five <clears throat> beautiful little waner souls, saints that are interceding for you up in heaven, they desire us to be with them. And again, I think it comes back to this punctuation mark of we're a mystical body of Christ and they see things we don't see. Why not avail to their prayers? Why not avail to their intercession? And and to specifically name those challenges, if it's financial, personal, relational, um, physical, health, whatever the case may be, God wants to hear our hearts and unite us in praying with others for that. The other thing I wanted to mention is the prayer that was prayed at the Holy Hours that were also prayed every day online on Facebook Live. They included the Litany of Healing, which was, Mm. but then the prayer continued on to pray for everybody, not just Adeline. It was beautiful. Um, If you have an opportunity, if we can post that somewhere in in a link of, of sorts, but that was praying for physicians, for those who lost a child. It was, it was really just for praying and lifting up everybody. So what was so beautiful for mm. me was knowing that as we were praying for Adeline, we were also having an opportunity as a community to pray for so many others. And it was drawing so many other people to pray, just to be in presence and pray and call upon him and give him glory and thank him with us as we would thank and thank God ahead of time. And as we would thank God for the, the small um, victories that we had day by day, the baby steps that we would say um, off the next machine or off of this or that medication, that mm. um, those opportunities to bring other people to praise God too, and um, to pray for other people. I think that was the other beauty um, mm. of the situation. So well, we'll put, make, I love that. We'll make sure to get that link in the show notes. So check that out. You'll remind me. Yes, I sure. will remind okay. you. <laughs> Wainers, it's, it's truly a blessing. Um, yes. Your hearts, your love for Christ, you're being kindred from the outset in your dating and <clears throat> engagement, marriage, family life. Um, I have to say, this is off the record, but they're, they're too few. And you know, they're hungering for that kind of friendship in their marriage, a missioned friendship in Christ. And they go through these events. I think many, we know this also, they go to an ax or Crisio chirp, whatever, and they cycle through them, but it never translates into their marriage and home life. And it leads to kind of frustration. And so blessed to be united with you and trying to help them realize God wants that more than they do. He wants them not simply to experience an ax retreat as a, something of that happened with those people there and then long ago, but he wants you to, to and is pouring forth the grace for your home to be that kind of place, for your children to experience it more vitally than they would a Steubenville retreat or a Damascus event or whatever the case may be. It's a high bar, but as I look around at the craziness of LA Dodgers and things happening, all the things happening in this world, like it's the absence of that witness, I believe that contributes substantially to the confusion. And we can point fingers all we want and why can they, whatever. It's because they haven't been given the vital witness of schleps like us who can give witness to God's love alive in marriage and family. And I'm just really grateful to have you guys on and uh, sharing your story. So back to February 14th, Mm. um, that particular evening that we walked on purpose would meet every Tuesday evening and Adeline and myself and a friend would set up after school, we'd go set up all the tablecloths and decorations. And so I had to, obviously I called um, my co-leaders and in the morning and I said, we're, I'm obviously we're, we're not going to be around. So at that point, they just hit the ground running with, well, we're not going to meet and do Bible study while this is happening. We need to do something like, like, let's, you know, how about we have a holy hour? So it just quickly 
um, went to, let's ask um, Deacon Phil and Deacon Phil said, well, absolutely. Mm. So put this on steroids is what I think I heard the quote. I didn't actually hear him say that, but, and then by, by the time, you know, six o'clock rolled around, it was completely packed with people and people that we, the witness we heard was that people who weren't even people that would normally go to church or even of our, of our Catholic faith, which was so beautiful to me, it pulled Mm. so many people together and um, for the common purpose of praying. And then the beauty of that, again, with the healing litany was that it was praying for everybody, not just Adeline, which, Mm -hmm. and it was just a holy hour. So we're adoring Jesus. Um, So that was just so beautiful that day specifically. Well, I'm creeping your page right now uh, on Facebook (laughs) and just going through and seeing the awesome images and testimonials going back Mm -hmm. February 20th, February 9th. I mean, just, just it's for those, again, social media can be so bad. And it really isn't in itself. It's it it's floats from maybe hearts that don't get the capacity. But what if, what if we saw them as occasions to give glory to God, to tell our stories, to ask for prayers, to bless others, to provide relevant, important news that might might connect us to other people, and all of that would be would really be fabulous. You know, be praying for us. I know you are, but like our, you know, I love my family. Us, our dream is we're blessed by good connections with your Peter Herbex and Bob Schutz and all those folks, Damascus and everything else. But if families had a vision and tools and a model flowing from these great events and an encouragement to make their homes that kind of place. Like, I don't know if you, you know, kind of took a gauge of all those who've been on acts retreats, all of whom were touched in some way. You know, the, the parable of the sower and the seeds, you know, seeds are planted. The biggest thing I think is missing, meaning keep planting, but it's the cultivation, a church that is alive to make it more than just these moments and think that there's some, that's kind of a, almost an evangelical thing, ironically, right? Just the one saved always saved, had that moment, wasn't it great? but to, to help them understand how can you make this your marriage and home? And it means healing. It means healing of memories. It means the ways they treated each other. It means patterns. It means a whole lot um, to really, I think, take it to a whole new level. It'd be interesting to have a conversation among those well, immersed it, in these sorts of things. But um, that's that's what we, um, I guess, we're about and in the conversation with, with pastors and leaders and just, because it's not really, you know, it's exciting to go get away for three days. and And even that's tough. We know that men and women, it's tough to do that, but to come back into your home and to ask, okay, how are we going to be different a month, a half a year, a year later as a home, as a result of this, that's to me, the difficult, challenging question that, that we're about. And we're blessed by people like you who already live in it. Waskovich's feelings. There's so many in your area that are, we see as superstars. Yeah. You guys not punctuating as saints and all that any more than us, but I mean, they're about it and wanting and and exhibiting that. And I think families don't believe it's possible. I don't, I think they truly, I think we're just trying we're just trying to get a little bit better every day, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and I, I think I remember when we were on uh, the Mas- Damascus retreat and you and I were talking, one of the songs that was uh, playing uh, was the firm foundation. Mm-hmm. And that song was very special to us during all this with Adeline. Um, and, and especially, uh, you know, that was the uh, gospel reading for at our wedding. Uh, many oh. years ago. So every man who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did mm-hmm. not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. Uh, and uh, and so I think we all need Christ, and he is our rock. And that doesn't mean the storms uh, aren't going to come. If anything, it's as, as Father John Ricardo says, it, it's, it might be a lightning rod for it, for the storms. Mm-hmm. But that's how we grow, you know, and that's the way he chooses and uh, we need to embrace that or embrace our crosses, you know, so to speak, because uh, they're, they're exactly what we need to draw closer to him. So, but it's, it's a day by day. We have good days and bad. We just try to sur- surrender a little more each day. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I love, I love that. That's your, that was your wedding gospel. What a great, what a great well, foundation. <laughs> Folks, you're tuning into Ignite Radio Live. Very blessed that you've been on the journey with us tonight, really seeking to uh, bring our question mark of God, are you there to the story the Wainers are sharing of their daughter, Addie, their family, the community is an occasion of seeing God work so powerfully. And wherever you find yourself right now in this current moment in your life, we just invite you to join us in lifting it up to God and seeking his grace. He allows every struggle, every difficulty to be an occasion of his hand forging us for greater intimacy with himself. And do think about the question with any loved one in your life, as we are entering into summer, maybe more time with family and friends. Maybe we're afraid of that. I don't know. Maybe there's broken things in our lives. All of us have them. People that are in need of being restored. Ask the question, what if, what if they, God took them from us tomorrow? 
Would we have the strength to go and maybe apologize or forgive or seek those moments of reconciliation that might restore us? Um, we asked and began in the beginning, talked about the power of praying over our children. And we've made that easy for you. You can go to massimpact.us forward slash prayer card. We're getting these throughout the world, massimpact.us forward slash prayer card. And we're going to conclude with this prayer right now. So, Anders, you may or may not know this. We know it by heart, but I did bring it up. I did cheat. So join us in this prayer right now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Let your holy anointing be upon each of our children, grandchildren, and godchildren this day and week. In your sacred name, we claim them for you. We renounce all whispers, lies, and influences of the enemy. We pray right now that each know your loving presence, be forged in virtue, and be flooded with an abundance of your Holy Spirit to live fully their identity and mission in you now and through all eternity. Amen. Folks, again, you can find that at massimpact.us forward slash prayer card. Get all of our great programming, some really good episodes. I think they're all great, but particularly this past month with Father Carlos Martins talking about exorcisms from that perspective. We had a great interview with Steve Dace and Father Darren Merlino on this movie, Nefarious, very worth seeing. We talked about some of the sociopolitical things unveiling and how can we think about these things from a Catholic perspective. And we invite you to join us in this adventure, the ultimate adventure that we all have of living our Trinitarian nature in God, husband and wife and family. Join us in that great adventure at ilovemyfamily.us. Until next time, God bless you.